Well, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another round of I Best Around with Electronics. And in today's episode, we're picking up where I left off a couple weeks ago with these things, which are eventually going to make a Deej mixing board. Hopefully by the end of this video, that will be the case. So remember how in the video when I introduced this Mux board that I built, I kind of introduced it with the Gordon Ramsay Hell's Kitchen sound effect? That was not by mistake. These wires are not very good. Although I cannot really exactly fix this bundle of wires that goes to the Arduino, I discovered that I have ribbon cables, or more specifically, the parts that can turn this gaggle of wires into a nice flat long lead, and there we go. But it gets better. So if you remember from my or if you don't remember, because I didn't really show it as much from my video about the server, I bought a whole big old bag of pin headers, which are the exact pitch and everything as the pins on the ribbon cable, which is perfect for me. So that's two things out of the way. And with that, I picked out enough to use the amount of ribbon cable we need, which is quite a bit. And it even gets better than that, because if you look at the board, and you're probably screaming at this because it's quite obvious, right around here where the display is set to go, there's a nice big area where it's just nothing but nothing, really. So what's great about all that is that now that we've got all this stuff squared away, we could just use this whole unused area and just put our headers here and... It's literally perfect, so then you can just run that through, and then we just run the wires there. So, let's get that all soldered up. So, that last scene may have been a couple milliseconds away from for you, but it's been a couple weeks away for me, because as it turns out, I haven't had much time to really deal with it. There's been a lot of stuff. A lot of it's actually going to be made into a video, and that's kind of the thing. But luckily, though, I was able to get us some time to get soldering done. Let's start out with what happened here, and as you can see, this is the same multiplexer board that I made last time. What I've done is I've replaced it with the two ribbon cables that I found. Originally it was just going to be like one, but this only has like 15 pins on it, and that's like, you know, not enough. And also, really, I needed, I wanted to have something to, to carry power with it, so there's our power connector. So it's about 15 plus 6 pins, that's like 21 pins total, which, you know, it carries all the stuff, it carries all the power rails needed to run the displays, all the stuff. Even though this is not going to be carrying the power for displays, it will be carrying the power for all the important electronics on board. Um, and speaking of the board that needs it, this is the board, this is the control panel surface board thing. Now, nothing's changed since last time on this. Uh, yeah, nothing has changed. But so when you look at the back that everything has, as I stated, I soldered in the pin headers. But I also, as you can see by this new mess of wires, I reused some of the wires, the old ones connecting the MUX board, or the multiplexer board, however you prefer to call it. And I just solder them together. So there you go, they're just point-to-point -point soldered, kind of, ish. You know, they all solder to the same buttons, they all connect to it. There's the mute, there's the solo, everything's all connected up now. Now, unfortunately, with it being a couple weeks later and me needing to really get this video out, I did not have any time to do any CAD work on this project. So, I have to relegate that to be a cliffhanger for next week's video. But what I can do, now that we have working electronics, I can just break out the Arduino, wherever that may be hiding, right here actually, and we can flash the software to the board, we can test it out, try out Dij like without without a case or without, you know, try out the software, um, and there we go. The software will be pretty basic in what it does for now. Maybe in part three, I might work on improving it a bit. 
but it'll at least be a good test, a good start. And it'll even it even has some of the stuff implemented for for controlling all of these here pins and stuff. So it should be just a really cool thing. So let's get right on to that. All right, so the Arduino's been connected. My camera stopped recording. That's not very good. Supposedly, it does not like the SD card I'm using. Anyways, so we've connected at least the basic stuff. I've left out the display in this version of the build. I need to find uh, the right wires for it. But otherwise, it's doing pretty good. We have this spare wire here that isn't currently connected in the code. But it is for this ninth button, which will be kind of like a forward button when we get media controls running. Right now, that's not connected. But I now have to connect all the other connections for the faders. So let's get that running. All right, so we have this mess of wires here. I've got my micro USB cable here. Let's arm the nugget. I mean, it is Shrek green, so let's give it the old dank pods and arm the nugget. Good. It didn't blow up. So let's try and get the firmware on it. Now, I have a screen recording over here. Let's see. It's detected my Arduino Leonardo. Let's upload it. And we have errors. Serial monitor. Oh! Well, look at this. Uh, what's up with the faders? Uh, that's not how that's supposed to look. Every single fader is being affected by my finger. Let's see how the lights are. Okay. A uh, slight problem. It's not detecting uh, the signal, it's not detecting button presses. Uh, that's not... At least the firmware loads, but... And the faders kind of work? Yeah, that's... A bit weird. It's weird, because it's like, once I ground myself on it, it's... Certainly doing something. Okay. What we should be always working. What happened here? All right, so I figured it out. And I think if I didn't hammer home that this video may be a PSA that you should probably bother to plan things out before. If I haven't hammered that home yet, well, I sure have. I sure should be now. Right now I'm disconnecting everything. And oops, let's connect all connectors here. And I figured it out. So when I was finishing, when I was putting on the finishing touches of soldering, I had a bit of an issue. Now, these connectors, I figured, oh yeah, we have eight buttons, we have eight pins, we have, you know, it's like I completely forgot that this button was here. Yeah. You know, and what the problem was is that. At the end, I was planning on making this the last pin because this is like six pins and I only really needed five. I think I wanted to put make it make this last pin like ground. And then I realized that I needed this uh, button. So what I did is I just disconnected this new ground lead. Problem is, is that it was going to be a separate ground that I was going to use for the five volt lines, which go to these here potentiometers. And, uh, yeah, these potentiometers need a grounding connection. So what I've got to do is I've got to bridge ground. Luckily, that is pretty easy, and I will probably just solder that in on camera. And this will probably be your daily PSA and daily reminder that you should probably plan these things out before you can just start working on them. Uh, don't be a bit of a, don't be the professional idiot that I am.
All right, so I fixed up that blunder. I started all that stuff down. Not sure how much of it it caught, but uh, anyways. Um, so now we've pretty much solved one of the big problems, which is that the faders don't shouldn't work. They should now work. So now let's go back and reconnect all the faders up again. So I guess now that we've got it working, we're creating so much of a bit of a creating a bit of a short with it. That's I guess once it reaches like zero, it yeah, it just the Arduino just shuts off because like oh, yeah, because there's like no resistance going to it, which is very weird. That should not be. Um, I guess it's a bit of a byproduct of these things, but what's cool about it is that at least we're at least we got verification that all the stuff genuinely works. Um, and of course, in true fashion, these are actually inverted, which does not help out. So we gotta we gotta invert them in the Arduino software. But other than that, uh, we gotta fix a few things. All right, all right. So great news: the potentiometers were wired a bit wrong, and that is there isn't really that much good documentation on these on these potentiometers. How shocking. So what happened is I misidentified the wiper on them. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, for the uninitiated, the wiper on a potentiometer is usually hooked up to this part, the thing that actually slides. So imaginably, that's what you need to connect it up to the Arduino. And more importantly, it's a bit of a thing. Now, the way you hook a potentiometer to an Arduino normally is that you have five volts in ground, five volts one end, ground on the other. That kind of creates a bit of a short, that can create a short, You can, as you can probably tell. But what that does is it actually creates a bit of a voltage divider. So, so it kind of goes from zero to one. So this would like be like, well, in this case, it's inverted. So it's like zero and then full voltage. It, it reduces voltage instead of current because resistors are weird. There's you can Google it. There's a lot of data on that. And what we've got to do now is I'm going to have to snip these things because I am not going to go underneath these and just start desoldering. It's a bit too late for that. And this video is already heaps late as I'm recording this. It's already a day late. So Let's just give it the old snip. Um, I'll just try and be as careful with it as possible. I might just metal fatigue the wire off completely, the remaining stub off. I mean, the area under there is kind of useless. And what I will do is that I now will have to solder some more wire to that so it'll be on ground. What will be really cool is that it'll actually make it a bit better because the tension, I hope, from this wire, from the wires going to that, will actually keep it held down better than just having it just flopping like it's been. So, let's get this all removed. Okay, so I fixed the software. Now everything is correct. All the sliders go up with the right thing, and the data is all correct. So that's pretty good progress. Um, yeah. So with that all said and done, that is it for today's episode. Yeah, we had a bit of progress today. Not the amount of progress or level of progress that I actually needed out of this project, but it's progress nonetheless. And if you like what you saw, there's a like button, there's a subscribe button. Probably in another couple weeks, you'll be seeing another episode of me building this. Hopefully it'll be the final episode where we will be messing around in CAD software, doing the CAD work that is needed to build the case for this. 
I will also be worrying about other things like figuring out what's wrong in the code or with, again, soldering and electronics that is making the multiplexers not completely work fine. But that's next episode, and who knows, I might even figure it out like right as soon as I get off camera or stop filming this episode. But with that being said, if you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, this channel is a bit of a random dumping ground, so if you really like random content like this, mostly centered around gaming, if I really don't have anything to do, that it you can subscribe for that. There is quite an, I do a lot of things. And that's it for today's video, and bye.